Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with a special update on tropical cyclone Zelia as it comes into the Kimberley and Pilbara regions of Western Australia, and even the gas coin could be affected by it. This is how it looks at eight o'clock this morning. We've got this offshore tropical cyclone, a little bit of windy weather going past Broome, but the bright shaded area here shows where the heaviest of the rain is. So it's a bit lopsided at the moment. As this low starts to develop offshore, it's kind of meandering around at sea for a couple more days before it decides to kind of move inland. So that's the part that we're still trying to lock in. And you'll see that in a moment from the Bureau of Meteorology with their, what we call the cone of uncertainty, which is uh, where the storm is going in the days ahead and kind of the wiggle room for that movement. And the cone of uncertainty is quite large because of uh, multiple computer models still not locking in the exact path of this system. And around the edges of it, severe thunderstorms inland. Uh, so this storm is creating weather underneath the storm and also inland around the outer edges. Here's the Bureau of Meteorology tracking. Now this shows it out at sea for the next couple of days, getting up to category three. Some of the computer modeling I've seen uh, shows it possibly even getting up to category four, but certainly category three, very much in the thinking. That brings it to a severe tropical cyclone. So Port Hedland, pretty much in the path of that storm. So is uh, 80 Mile Beach. Broome appears to be on the outer edges of it at this stage. So the warnings exist south of Broome, but not necessarily including Broome, although a bit of a windy northerly coming through today. Here is the cone of uncertainty, this kind of gray shaded area. It's really large, covers a massive part of Western Australia. And that's because, like I say, with the computer modeling, it's not 100% locked in that this is the exact track. Uh, and even if it does move in, will it move in at the same speed or will it slow down and stall? There are other questions still to be locked in. So what that means is there's a lot of rain on the way. We'll kick off with the wind though. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology. So they're picking it to get up to category three here as we go into February the 14th and severe category three as it makes landfall uh, somewhere north of Port Head but like I say, this isn't exactly locked in just yet. This is the Bureau's best thinking. That's why they do multiple updates across the day because the path does always sort of change each time you update, quite often anyway. So they'll still be locking this in for another day or so, but uh, this is the area most exposed, certainly Port Hedland in there, but everywhere south of Broome, and all the way down to about Caratha, Dampier, those are the areas exposed to tropical cyclone Zelia. Here is the wind map for eight o'clock this morning. So in the red shaded area, that's the area with gales. It was only category one when we recorded this. Shouldn't say only, it means it's actually a tropical cyclone, but the scale goes up to five. So it's one when we recorded this. It may be two as we go through today. A Little bit windy around the coastal zone here, but even when you go further down around the Gascoigne, it's windy on the outer edges of this large area of low pressure. And there's another low, uh, not a cyclone, but another low south of the country, and that's also helping to make it windier along the western coastline. Let's go into eight o'clock Thursday morning. Now you might notice we've got two different things going on here. That's because I'm showing you two different computer models. A lot of weather forecasters do this around the world to kind of work out where it's most likely to go. So the one that's animated, that's GFS out of America. That's the one that we use in most of our computer maps, uh, computer modeling, because uh, for our videos, we need to have a global consistent, no matter what country we're covering. So we always use the GFS, but it's always good to see what the European Union is saying and their modeling from ECMWF, and they are showing a severe, possibly category four cyclone here, tracking a little bit further to the west and the south of the American modeling. So what does that mean if you're looking at that? Well, it basically means everywhere from Port Hedland up to 80 Mile Beach, that's the risk zone because you can see these two very reliable models not quite in line. Uh, some people prefer GFS, others ECM, but it's basically like saying which rugby team is the best. Now I'm gonna be biased and say New Zealand because that's where I'm from and you'll probably say the Wallabies. And so when you put the two uh, into a stadium, would you bet every money you've got that the team you're picking is going to win it that's a little bit like this. They are very close in their accuracy and you don't always know which one is going to end up on the day being the most accurate computer model. So we look at more than just one. And what we're seeing here on Friday morning at eight o'clock, your time in Western Australia, this is uh, the ECM modeling showing it coming right in to the Port Hedland Township. But the American modeling shows it further out at sea. Now I also want to compare this with something else. So keep an eye on the GFS map that is still out there at sea. Here it is still there. But this new update, that's the Bureau of Meteorology's computer modeling. 
So the Bureau is picking it to be quite a lot further north, uh, European one over towards Port Hedland. So that's the reason why that cone of uncertainty is so large, because it can kind of come in anywhere on this coastline, and once it comes inland, there's quite a large range yet of where it still might track. Now you'll probably find in the next day or so, all those computer models start to really fine tune and become more in sync. We'll be looking for that when we do our normal Australia update tomorrow, Thursday. We'll have another look at what's going on. We'll try and make sense of it. But certainly there's a large area here that could be affected by wind and rain. And on Saturday, this is the American modeling. We've just put one model on this map showing the storm tracking inland, still retaining cyclone status once it is inland. Quite often they lose their cyclone status once they get inland, uh, but this one is now tracking southwards into more populated areas. Tom Price and Parabadu also could be seeing it. In fact, um, Parabadu could get quite a close call to that very heavy rain in the area. So a lot of rain is on the way. We're talking, well, let's actually, uh, before I tell you that, why don't we actually show you the rainfall? That one might make a bit more sense. This is going from Wednesday to Saturday, and it's that area in the middle with the dark, deep blue, that is the area with the heaviest rain. That's where it goes off the key, off the scale, 300 millimeters plus. Now remember when we saw Townsville last week, some areas got eight, 900 millimeters in a very short amount of time. We're not expecting exact uh, setup, no storm and no setup is ever the same, but just shows you that the intense tropical energy up here could produce much bigger rainfall totals than just what you're seeing on the key. So worth keeping an eye here, Port Hedland up to 80 Mile Beach, that's the area you're going to see some flooding. And also with that storm surge, that's another part of it that can block up rivers as well. So a lot of wet weather coming to Western Australia. Here is the map of it animated for the next few days ahead, just to give you a bit of an idea. You can see some inland thunderstorms around the edges of it. Those could be severe. The storm itself at this stage, likely to track right through the middle but that could still wobble a little bit west or east. So we'll update you again tomorrow, Thursday. And like I say, please do keep up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology locally in Western Australia. They will be the ones that are fine tuning the details of the bigger picture that I've just given you. That's all from me. We'll see you again on Thursday.